In September every year, you will find the biggest snowmobile event of the world in a field outside North Branch, Minnesota. Hi everyone, welcome to the Sedona Tire Ripsaw Ridge Terracross National presented by Polaris Razor. I'm Tess Sewell alongside Grant Langston, Georgia Lindsay down on the track. Terracross is a relatively new phenomenon in the world of racing and to hear more about it, let's go to our athletes. We're just touching the tip of the iceberg. You look down the list of, of guys that are coming into Terracross, do it professionally, you've got some of the biggest, best names in motorsports and action sports. I would say with technology and these other manufacturers being involved in more of the cars becoming race ready to come out here and go racing, I think it'll be mind boggling when we all look back on it. Just gaining speed right now, you know, the last few years it just doubles in size each year and you know, I'm on the front line of what's going on and there's a lot of cool things to come. Riding it now and being a part of it, it's blowing my mind and physically like being behind a razor, I'm brainstorming already what to like do for the future. Well, let's have a look at our track today. Off the Optima start line, through the Walker Evans whoops, then the Fox Proving Ground split lane. Into the only left on the track, up to another split lane, then your double right-hander into the Sedona Ripsaw Ridge. One more right-hander and over the Fly Racing finish line. Our pro women's final getting ready to start. Favorite here, Jolene Van Vute, and down on the track with her is Georgia Lindsay. Jolene on the start line getting ready for the first moto. Uh, Jolene, the track, it seems to be uh, pretty technical out there, pretty rough. Um, what have you learned from watching the first two races? Uh, there's definitely been a lot of carnage. Uh, unfortunately, a, a lot of axles have been breaking, so got to keep it calm on the mangler and try not to interact with too many people. So keep my distance, just drive my own race. Well, pretty uh, wise advice on how to, to race this track, Grant. Jolene's got that inside line, but she's going to have some challenge from Sarah Price. Yeah, two very established female drivers. As you look at the rest of our Fly Racing Women's Pro XP 1000 lineup, good thing they're on the front row. The two fastest from qualifying. Let's see how this start goes for these drivers. So we're ready for that green flag to be raised, and they are off the black machine there on the outside. Got a great launch. That's the 78 of Sarah Price. Yeah, great jump from Sarah Price, had to go to the outside there, which obviously the shorter line was up the inside for Jolene. She's got it for the moment, but Sarah's still trying to come work that outside line. So Jolene Van Dute in the pink and yellow Rockstar rig, the black Hoonigan rig of Sarah Price there, still has to work her way around the outside, so she has the disadvantage of that line. Yeah, settling into that second position, we see our E3 spark plugs on board from Sarah Price with Jolene right in sight, so really tight. Is she going to take a different line? She does. Very smart move there. You can't pass if you follow, but I think that outside cost her just a bit of time. Now in third place, Jamie Luberg, she is all over the back of Price, so one mistake. You see what can happen on this racetrack. Jamie Luberg, the Luberg family, her brother Jason builds these tracks. They are both great racers. Oh no, look at this, Kayla Savage off the track, already out of the race at the end of the first lap, so unfortunate for her. Meanwhile, Jolene Van Butte holding off a hard charging Sarah Price. This is a beautiful shot, that Odyssey battery on board. You can see the concentration in her eyes, just look at her working that wheel back and forth steering and counter steering sarah price still coming under pressure from jamie luberg so the battle for the podium positions still rage on sarah's spent enough time in these machines now where she is learning how to hold off chargers like jamie luberg but we sat down with her earlier to talk about the transition from two wheels to four yeah, it's quite a big transition, honestly. Like on the bike, you have your body positioning. You're able to correct things if you make a mistake or move the bike in the air. And this, it's all throttle control. You gotta know what you're doing when you get off that lip to when you're gonna land. And it's all beforehand with your throttle and setting the car up. It, it's everything. It, it, you don't have your body to help it move in the areas you'd like it to be if you make a mistake. I got into racing UTVs uh, pretty fast and doing a lot of series. Like, tons of different things and uh, yeah it's been it's been a fun journey honestly and it's, it's really nice to have a cage around you <laughs> on board there the e3 spark plugs on board of Sarah Price and watch this 
plows into some dirt off the left. That was a face full of dirt there. And something we haven't talked that much about is vision. And when you're out front, obviously you can run your lines and have clear vision. A lot of these jumps, you'll see that roost coming off Jolene's car right into the face of Sarah Price. Once again, on board with the Odyssey batteries with Jolene Van Butte from Ontario, Canada. A lot of people probably recognize her from the Travis Pastrana and all their crazy shenanigans from over the years, Nitro Circus, Sarah Price, a very well-established motocross racer, turned to four wheels. So two women from uh, slightly different walks of life, but you can see their talent shining right now. And you can see in that shot of Jolene from the onboard just the intensity in her eyes. But here, Sarah gets close to Jolene every time they go to Ripsaw Ridge. And that is actually why she's getting sprayed so heavily by that roost. The Fly Racing Pro Women's Class continues after the break. Let's see if Jolene Van Vute can hold off the charge. Terracross on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Polaris Razor. Fuel your freedom by flyracing.com and by Lucas Oil. Made in America, sold to the world. Welcome back everyone to the Sedona Tire Ripsaw Ridge Terracross National presented by Polaris Razor. Furious racing here in our Fly Racing Pro Women's Class. Jolene Van Butte leading out Sarah Price, but then Jamie Luberg is closing in on the two of them. A great battle here for the lead. Top three drivers all in the same shot. With time to play, can Luberg get up on these front two? We see at times Sarah Price is able to close right up on the rear of Jolene. And then, you know, maybe a different line or a slight mistake, and then she's got to catch it all right back up. And while that's happening, it's allowing the third place driver to close in. Well, the interesting thing is Sarah is really quick to do that technical Fox proving ground. And then Jolene seems to find a little bit of something to get away from her in the straightaways. But Sarah is crawling all over the back of that pink Rockstar machine. Yeah, problem here when you come to one of these sections like oh! just that, is that can happen. And luckily not to get hit from behind by Luberg, Sarah Price. That is one of those downfalls of becoming too close to the drive in front of you through that section. And before the break, we talked about how Sarah was getting hit by the roost from Jolene because she was so close every time they went through Ripsaw Ridge. And there, just a little too close. Now, she's got to work her way past Jamie Luberg too. So Jamie Luberg, right place, right time. Sarah Price probably a little frustrated under that visor, figuring she's got the speed to win this race, but now finds herself trying to just battle to get back up there, and a little mistake from Luberg. Price has to back out of the throttle and losing more time to the leader. And really doesn't have a lot of time now, and Jamie Luberg is doing a great job just blocking the lines on this course. And there, Sarah... She decided to back off just a little bit after what happened with Jolene, but the white flag is out. This is it. This is the last lap. Can Sarah Price somehow find a way past that orange 525 of Luber? If she's got to do it, she's got to do it soon. This is one of the sections that she's been strong, but Luberg smart goes to the inside to defend, forces Price to the outside, and we see that turn starting to bog down just a little on the outside. Sarah will get a better drive but just losing just a key couple of car lengths. And this is all good news for Jolene Van Butte while the fight goes on behind her for second. She just has to make a couple more turns out of the Sedona tire, Ripsaw Ridge makes the right. This is it, the win in the fly racing pro women's class goes to Jolene Van Butte. Second will be Luberg. She does hold on. Great drive for her. And I'm sure a very frustrated Sarah Price will finish in third place. She is on the podium. Jolene Van Butte takes her win here at North Branch. And for Sarah Price, the frustration must be just huge. She was racing well, but mistakes, well, that's what costs you the win. Let's head down to the finish line now. And Georgia Lindsay, who's caught up with Jolene and Sarah. Wow, that was one entertaining race. Jolene, start off, congratulations, taking the win. Uh, you seem pretty like smooth throughout the whole race there with the good starts and everything. 
Yeah, definitely. That was what I came out here to do. Um, I kind of have more of a past of crashing and riding really kind of crazy and erratic and I've been able to kind of bring my riding down and be calm and I focus more on my breathing, taking the smooth lines, not getting too upset about people being around me. And that was actually my first ever win in Terracross. Well, that's first. I love that first place and for the first time. But let's talk about Sarah Price getting third in that race. But what happened? I mean, right on that jump behind us, catching the back of Jolene's wheel. What, what was going on? Oh, man. Yeah, that was a it was a crazy race. I'm so proud of Jolene. She's come so far. And honestly, that was an incredible driving by her. But, you know, I was right on her the whole entire race. I started second behind her. And, uh, dude, yeah, that, that mangler, you have to give yourself some room. And then she went into limp mode on the top of it. And so when that happens, there's nothing you can really do. Uh, that was kind of a bummer on the second to last lap. But, hey, that's racing. And I'm stoked to be here with some good girls and can't wait to go back out there. Well, congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Uh, just an awesome view of sky out of Sarah Price's car. Coming up next, the men will take the track for the Pro-Am Razor XP1000. Be sure to check it out when we come back. In a farmer's field in North Branch, Minnesota, with 40,000 of our closest friends at the Heydays event, this is the Sedona Tire Ripsaw Ridge Terracross National, presented by Polaris Razor. Tessul alongside Grant Langston and Georgia Lindsay. You can get yourself some hillbilly fries if you were out here right now, or you could hang out and watch the Pro-Ams in their Razor XP1000 tackle this Terracross course, Grant. Yeah, these guys getting ready for the race. Jeff Skase on that pole position, good starting point. Jason Plouffe as well on the front row. Andy Ives right behind him, Ross Robinson and Darren Meese round out your top five. So you see him getting ready to race and the green flag is waving. That was a great race start there for Jason Pluff. Wow, good on board shot here from Andy Ives at Fly Racing. Oh, uh -oh. and he gets real close there. Jeff Skase gets a little love tap from behind from Andy Ives. Oh, Whoa. Pluff goes over and a big one for him there and just like a turtle, he is stuck upside down. Another driver unable to avoid it. So Jason Plouffe, let's have a look at this one. Watch, just drops that front end, not quite able. Nose pick, almost had it coming around here. Yeah, we thought might have had it, almost. And maybe got on the throttle a little bit too early, and then falls back on to Ross Robinson. So his Plouffe is now the right way up, but that was... An unfortunate circumstance for him. He was leading out the race at that point. And now Andy Ives has managed to find his way through, being followed by Skase and Darren Meese. What a interesting lap one there. A lot of action and a lot of changing of position. On board with Jeff Skase, who won the military class last year, and Georgia met up with him earlier in the pits. Joined by Jeff Skase, now winning the military class last year, but pro this year. You are going into this, but to do some trial and error to improve your product. Tell me about Optimus. That's right. Optimus is actually the OEM supplier for starter motors for all these machines out here. So me personally, I'm the vice president of Optimus. I wanted to get out here with the guys in the dirt and understand the riding experience. Just to get to know what's important to them. And doing it in the pro class, this is, uh, you know, this is going to be an experience for you. Uh, what do you think you're going to learn to try and improve the product? It's already been quite an experience. Uh, some phenomenal athletes out here. It's an honor to be surrounded by, by such great talents. And anything I can soak up from them, I'm happy. Best of luck. Thanks, Jeff. Well, I, I don't think he was planning to soak up that bump from Andy Ives at the start of the race, but Skase doing well so far at being challenged on the inside by Darren Meese. On board our E3 spark plugs with Darren Meese. Great move then, up into second spot. You saw both drivers trading mistakes through that turn and it was basically who made the least amount of mistakes and now up to the inside. Back again, Jeff Skase does not want to give this position up and he oh, finds it, gets it right back. Nice move there, he crossed the line at the start of that step down. So Meese really didn't have a chance to jump down there. Great racing from Jeff Skase, and Meese is just fighting hard. Ho, ho, ho. He came out of the 
big dip there, a little bit sideways. That threw him to the inside, so he didn't really have a choice on what line to take. But fortunately, Mies had left the door open. Once again, side by side, through the split lane. Unbelievable watching these onboards. Oh, look. Was that a gear problem there for Darren Mies? It, it look, certainly looked like it. We've seen it happen before to some of these units. As they get bashed around, they can jump out of gear every now and then. And the more you try and grab on that shift lever while moving, you can grind those gears. And maybe it's terminal, or maybe he's just being cautious. But Darren Mies off the pace. That Lucas Oil on board showing us. You can almost see the frustration in his eyes. So Andy Ives leading this one out right now. This is our Pro-Am Razor XP. Andy Ives is leading over Jeff Scase. Let's see what happens when we come back. The Pro-Am Razor XP 1000 on the track here at the Sedona Tire Ripsaw Ridge Terracross National presented by Polaris Razor. Andy Ives in the lead in this race. He is having a great weekend out here in North Branch. Yeah, looking smooth out there. But don't look over your shoulder right now because there is plenty of competition and that's in the form of Ross Robinson. He is close in second, slight little gap. And then another battle for that third spot between three drivers. Oh! Wow, contact there happening and happening in the very bottom of the pit at our Sedona Tire Ripsaw Ridge. Darren Meese is just not having a good day. Yeah, you see the lines come together here. Lands a little awkward, he hooks that rear tire, throws him in the side. See our cameraman doing the smart thing. He runs for cover. Fortunately, the uh, UTV stays on track. It's on its side, crowd having a look. But that will bring out a full course yellow. And they'll get him back over. That vehicle looking a little secondhand at the moment, but we know our races are, Tess. They'll just keep going if they can. Oh, they will, and he can keep going, being on his roof, being right side up because of the safety gear. We talked to Andy Ives about that earlier. Derek Ross is all about the rough, tough, and money racing, but it's also about safety. If you look at the cockpit of these vehicles, you'll notice all the drivers are wearing either a four or five point harness. That's to keep the drivers attached to the vehicle at all times. The other thing you'll notice is the equipment the driver's wearing. If you look at me here, I have a, a fire suit on. I'm also holding here a full face helmet with a neck restraint. If you're not familiar with the head and neck restraint, basically you see here is it attaches the driver's head to the, the shoulders in order to keep the neck from overextending. So whether you're out there racing, whether you're out there trail riding, make sure you always wear your safety equipment so you can keep coming out and keep having fun. Wise words there from our race leader, Andy Eyes. We are now lined up for a restart at the Optima start line. Ives in that black and orange machine gets a great jump at the start. Yeah, exactly what he wanted. Gets that inside to protect that first turn. Comes out in front. So second place still for Ross Robinson. Looking solid. Third at the moment, I believe is Skase. And behind him is Jason Plouffe. So the battle for the podium is on. Ives got the lead at the moment, just stretching out a, about a car length or two. And the beauty of that is you don't have to worry about continuously protecting or closing the door on the inside. You can run your lines that you want, whether that means going to the outside of the split lanes, whatever's the fastest. And you know why we were, you know, watching all that chaos and carnage go on with Mies and Skase. Robinson here in the yellow and black machine just managed to calmly pace himself, crept through the field. He's now sitting in second place. The white flag is out. There's one lap left, and he is actually chasing Andy Ives with a clear road between him and third place. So that's a great run there for Ross Robinson. Absolutely. We almost have two battles on the track, one for the lead and one for third. Who's going to come out on top on this battle? Who's going to be the odd man not on the podium? At the moment, it looks like it will be Plouffe. And here we're on board, the Lucas Oil on board of Jeff Skates. Oh. Whoa, look at Ives being pressured from behind by Ross Robinson. I haven't seen him make a mistake like that. He's obviously feeling the pressure. <laughs> He's just going to hold him up for one more turn. And that will be enough, taking the win in the Pro-Am Razor XP1000 class. 
Andy Ives over Oregon's Ross Robinson. And Skase manages to pull his way through to third. Wow, great racing there. Got to take your hat off to Robinson, pushing all the way to the end there. Kept Ives honest right down to the finish line. And we heard from Andy Ives earlier talking about the machines, talking about safety, but he left it all on the track in that race to keep himself in front, and he's down with Georgia Lindsay. Andy Ives taking another win, leaving Heydays feeling pretty good, I'm sure, but it was a lot of chaos in that race, but you stayed out front and just smooth and simple. Yeah, we were, uh, the track was changing a little bit, so we were uh, changing up our lines a little bit at the end, and the guys are coming. They're getting, they're getting faster as well, so we're going to come back for this final round here and try to, try to change it up a little bit more and see what else we got left in the tank. Well, good job. Well done. Thank you. Pro-Ams are done on our Terra Cross track. Coming up next, one of our favorite classes here, the Sedona Tire Celebrity X Turbo. This one is going to be fun. You do not want to miss it. TerraCross on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by TerraCrossRacing.com. Affordable entertainment television. By E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. And by Lucas Oil. Made in America. Sold to the world. Imagine drag racing on the grass on a snowmobile. That's what they do here at Heydays. This is the Sedona Tire Ripsaw Ridge Terra Cross National presented by Polaris Razor. All kinds of chaos going on. Traxxas racing, people wandering around, swapping parts. And coming up, our Celebrity X Turbo class and one of the favorites, Hubert Rowland, who is down with Georgia Lindsay. Everybody's favorite redneck, Hubert. Now, Hubert out there on the track in the first moto, you were coming through the guys. You just had a lot of trouble, ended up pulling off. Um, is it the, the lucky pony sitting next to you that's going to help you out this time? No, the pony kept telling me to watch out for other people, and I turned right into a guy, and it rolled me in a broken axle. It, it's my fault. Pony told me the right way. I just got to listen to him this race and make something good happen. Did you have to do any fixing of uh, the buggy in between? Uh, no big deal. Just uh, clean the radiator and a couple little things, and then we're back to go. All right. We'll look forward to seeing you out there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what I learned from that interview is that the pony isn't always the best reporter for you. So, getting ready to start the Celebrity X race. This is a really fun race, but it's pretty hotly contested. Oh yeah, all these drivers have been fast. Look for Damon Bradshaw on, coming from the back. See how he can do. He's shown a lot of pace throughout the weekend. It's going to be interesting off the start. Will it be a clean one? A uh, good start there for the yellow and black DeWalt machine of Nate Wessel. But he's being pressured by that number 16, the green and black monster machine of Brett Turcott. Going through the Walker Evans whoops and into the first turn. Good lead by Wessel. And look at Damon Bradshaw already fighting its way through. He's gotten fifth. Has he gotten fourth? Well, sorry, he was in fifth, went to fourth, now third. So two positions in, a little mistake. Oh, all the drivers getting a little high centered, and Bradshaw, out of all that, gets a second. No, he doesn't. Oh, it looks like he has a problem. What happened there? Wow. One turn made such a difference. Wessel went from first to fourth. Bradshaw was fighting, and it looks like he is now out of the race. Uh, he's pointing back, so I wonder if that's terminal. Odyssey Battery bring you that onboard shot of Bradshaw. He's shown a lot of pace, unfortunately, just not the results to go with it. But, whoa, look at that, up the inside. Hubert just put the pedal to the metal. I was gonna say this left the door open for Brett Turcott, but left the door open. It was like Hubert Rowland came storming through the barn doors there. I have no idea where he came from, but that was some incredible racing. Well, he's obviously got a heavy right foot because he just matted it there and got great drive. Puts himself in the lead. Now, third place, you see Nate Wessel getting a little uh, cross rutted coming out of that turn on board with Jim Beaver in that fourth place with our fly racing on board camera. So he's got nothing to look at behind, but everything in front. Oh! oh! Wessel oh! goes over. It looked for a second like he might be able to make it, but unfortunately, you slam into those walls and it can so quickly pop you onto your side. That, that had to be one of the uh, slowest crashes I've ever seen. 
It was in slow motion. He must have felt like it was a lifetime just sitting there in that bicycle position, balancing on two wheels, and eventually it tipped over. But they'll get him back up where the roof should be, which is up top, wheels on the ground. But he will lose a lap in this process. Get that machine fired up, see if that razor gets going again. Well, so far, we haven't seen anyone go past him. There is Jim Beaver. He has now worked his way into second place. And again, just sitting there calmly, watching what goes on. He was behind Nate Wessel when the carnage happened. And now he's in second, trying to chase down Hubert Rowland. You see him take his hand off the steering wheel there, I think just to give a little wipe across the visor of the helmet. Maybe getting some of that wet roof stuck on there. This is where we saw Wessel go over the previous lap. But Beaver solidly in second. So Nate Wessel has restarted. Jim Beaver again trying to chase down Hubert Rowland, who so far has had a race to remember. Some amazing moves from Hubert. And there's Wessel just punishing himself all the way around this Terracross track. Hubert Rowland and his magical stick horse holding off the charge of Jim Beaver. This is the Sedona Tire Celebrity X Turbo. More when we return. Welcome back to the Sedona Tire Ripsaw Ridge Terracross National presented by Polaris Razor from beautiful North Branch, Minnesota. Tess Sewell alongside Grant Langston and Georgia Lindsay. And you're on board with Damon Bradshaw, the former two-wheel rider known as the Beast from the East. This is his first run in Terracross racing, and he's been having a pretty interesting weekend. He sure has. He's shown a lot of speed, uh, but the results haven't really shown for it. But we had a chance to talk to Damon Bradshaw about how he handles all the different forms of racing that he's been involved in over the years. The transition from motorcycles to four wheels to monster trucks to UTVs, it all seems to relate a little bit. You know, everybody uses that saying, with age comes a cage, and I like the thought of having a cage over my head, but yet I still ride moto as well. So, you know, racing all different types of vehicles and then getting invited not only by Terracross, but by Sedona Tire and Wheel and Fly Racing uh, with WPS to be here and race is uh, another one of those marks um, that I haven't been able to do. And, and so to go and experience something totally different than what you're used to, I, it's, you, you can't put it into words. So Hubert Rowland there, he's really working this course. And that is Brett Turcott, who is actually a lap down right now. Jim Beaver working his way around the turn on the number 15 car is in second place. And the yellow ride of Nate Wessel, currently in third. Yeah, for Damon Bradshaw, being a couple laps down, probably doesn't want to interfere with the leaders, but it looks like he's got the pace, wanting to get basically a lap back from Jim Beaver, but choosing wisely just to get some time on the seat. White flag out, last lap. So for Hubert, he can make up for that mistake he made yesterday with that lucky horse of his, got his co-pilot in tow. And for Hubert, Brett Turcott, that number 16 green and black machine behind him is actually good news because that will cause anybody troubles that is trying to catch up with him. Not that I think anybody can make up this gap because Hubert has really been on point today and has managed to ride smoothly around this track. And I think that is gonna give him the victory. That is one of the keys, Tess, is being smooth. Because when you're smooth, a lot of times you're efficient and fast, and that's what got it done today. Here we go through the Sedona Tire Ripsaw Ridge for the last time. Everyone's favorite redneck, Hubert Rowland, crosses the line, takes the Sedona Tire Celebrity X Turbo win. And Jim Beaver is going to work his way through in second place. And Nate Wessel who at one point was on the side, managed to right himself and comes up in third place. Tough race though for Damon Bradshaw with what looked like it could have been terminal. And Hubert Rowland showing that speed as well as the fastest lap of the race. And he is down there with Georgia Lindsay.
Well, it was one man and his horse. They didn't mow meadow, but they won the race. Hubert, congratulations. It seemed like you just had some fire in you today. I mean, despite the first moto having issues, you were coming through the pack and taking the second moto win. Uh, how are you feeling out there? I, I mean, of course it feels awesome to win, but it feels awesome just to be part of Heydays and all the great people behind us, Sedona and Polaris. And my little horse, I mean, yeah, he's fake, but it makes you feel better. <laughs> And uh, it's just fun to have fun things around. We got great people that are out there driving. So just try to be smooth, not break it, and just make it to the finish. That's the biggest thing. Congratulations, you did a great job. Thank you so much. Well, he lets us in on the secret, folks. The horse is fake. There we see <laughs> that DeWalt machine being picked up out of the hole, but he did manage to get third. Second, though, what a great run for Jim Beaver. Georgia has caught up with him. Jim Viva taking second place in that last race. Wow, the track has changed a lot throughout that, but there was some battling going on. Oh, there was definitely some battling going on, you know, and uh, this track, like you said, it, it's completely different than it was uh, earlier in the other races. Uh, you know, it, it's about survival. You got to make it to the finish line. Uh, as you guys saw, shenanigans ensued, but uh, yeah, we were here. We uh, made it to the finish. Car's still in one piece. We're ready to go for later. Congratulations, Rodham. Well Thank you. Fun celebrity race here, and coming up next, the battle of the sexes. The pro women versus the pro-am in the XP 1000 shootout. You don't want to miss that. Terracross on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Polaris Razor. Fuel your freedom. By Sedona Tire and Wheel. And by Lucas Oil. Made in America, sold to the world. Welcome back, everyone, to the Sedona Tire Ripsaw Ridge Terracross National, presented by Polaris Razor. We're here at Heydays in North Branch, Minnesota, the world's biggest snowmobile event. 40,000 people in a field an hour north of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Well, the Pro Women versus Pro Am XP 1000 shootout is one of the most popular events of the weekend. And who doesn't love a battle of the sexes, Grant? Uh, everybody does. We know which team most people are. The women on the women's side. And you know the guys don't want to be beaten by the women. But there's a lot of talent coming from that women's side. So all the odd numbers will be the uh, men lining up. And on the even side, you've got the women. So. Uh, all knows the tale of the sexes as well. So Jolene Van Butte there closest to us in that pink and yellow Rockstar machine. Darren Meese in the blue number 18. Jolene gets a great start, but she's got the outside line. As we go on our Odyssey battery on board with Jolene, gives you a perspective what she's going through, leads it to, oh, and some contact. Bruce, so much happening on this opening lap. Well, I guess that's what happens, Tess, when you put twice as many machines, it becomes organized chaos. Well. I wouldn't call it quite organized, but it definitely is chaos. Sarah Price there, she was trying to find a way around Jolene, but as we got into that log section and the Fox Proving Grounds, that is where a lot of the challenges happen. Oh, oh. no, Ives is over. And just like that, Ives on his side. Now there's a telling on board for you. Yeah, that gives you the whole story there from that E3 spark plugs camera view. And what does that mean? It leaves the woman out one, two, Sarah Price takes the lead, the, probably the biggest benefactor on that opening lap, Jolene right behind her. So at the moment, the woman putting it to the men. At the moment, we've got all girl power. And then you saw that 541 of Ross Robinson. Remember in his race in that uh -oh. Pro-Am, he was quietly creeping up. But what has happened to Sarah Price? She just stopped in yeah. the middle of the Fox Proving Grounds. She obviously, no power at the moment she came to a standstill trying to get that fired up and how bitterly disappointing after a great start being out front and then something like that she's got to be just gutted at the moment so ross robinson in the yellow and black machine trying to find his way around jolene van Vute. jolene winning her women's race and she is now trying hard to hold him off she takes a different line through the sedona Ooh. tire ripsaw ridge and robinson almost landed on top of her <laughs> That was probably a little too close for comfort. Green flag still waving. That means we'll continue racing. Robinson keeping the pressure on. Jolene out front. There you see the stranded machine of Sarah Price. 
Oh, Darren Meese is actually trying to find. He found a way around the right-hand side of Price. I didn't think he'd make that. Oh, and a mistake from Joe Lee side by side over that big jump. She comes up short. She's going to lose one, maybe two positions here. Oh, and a problem for her as well. Oh, no. Both of our top female drivers, Jolene Van Butt, Sarah Price, having mechanical problems out there on the track. So now she's racing alongside Lucas Olsen, who's jumped in that number 124 for Jeff Skase, who had to take off and catch an early flight. Nice of him to hand that over to Olsen, who's quietly snuck up from the back of the field in a great position right now, fighting for that podium position. But you've got to wonder, the problem that Jolene already experienced, the problem for Sarah, is she now got to be worried that that could happen again and it could allow Olsen a way through? So we'll try fill you in. It's Robinson in the lead. Mies is in second. Oh, Robinson dug that outside. Tires in there. Everyone trying to find their way around that stranded car of Sarah Price on board with Andy Ives in that sixth place with our fly racing on board. Hear that wind noise. And you can see how this track has changed throughout the day, Tess. A lot of ruts and grooves really forming it. Oh, wow. How did they drive away from that one? Ives basically did a wheel tap off the roll cage. And I can only imagine if you're Jason Pluff, you were looking out the side of that machine and all you could see was tire. Well, he knows at least he was running some Sedona tires. He got a close up look at that. I probably could have uh, put his hand out and checked the tire pressure if he wanted to. And there, one of the women in the 37W, 18-year-old Addison Nibel. She actually is studying marine zoology, so it's not all about dirt and racing. Oh, Andy Ives, man. This guy is not afraid to out-jump people. Once again, grabs a handful, and oh, I wonder if that's from the contact. Seeing the uh, passenger door open on Robinson, won't slow him down that much. It's probably more annoying than anything else. But it has allowed Mies to creep his oh. way through the first and eyes over again. Oh, man, this has been a tough race for Andy Ives. I think what you're seeing is as the race is going down, and a problem for Jolene is what these ruts getting so deep, these guys are catching the side walls of the tire and it's just popping them over. Let's have a look at what happens here. Ives just comes in the corner, grabs a handball. Yep. The tires are just catching those sidewalls and getting a lot of grip, throwing them over. And Jolene had a check up going through that ridge. And again, rip. was that the problem that Jolene experienced before that caused her to come up short coming out of that hole? Ross Robinson, though, has managed to get himself past Mies again. Door is open. He's waiting for a passenger to jump in, but I don't think he's going to get one. Saw the yellow flag out there. Ives back on his roof. He'll go down another lap. So Robinson, even with that door jammed wide open, <laughs> the only thing it's going to do is make it even harder for anyone to get by. Talk about making your vehicle as wide as possible. He's got the doors open. Oh, Ives runs into the back as Robinson checked up at the exit of the turn. But Robinson really defending his line well there. He crossed over and made sure Ives couldn't get past him. I don't know if he knew that it was Andy Ives who's a lap down or if it was Darren Meese, but he is defending this really well. Well, for Andy Ives, he would love to try and get back on the lead lap and have a chance to make up some ground on board our E3 Sparks plug with Darren Meese, who is in that second place in this uh, back and forth battle that he's been having all race long. So the blue and white car, the number 18 of Darren Meese, he is in second place, but being chased now by Lucas Olsen again. Jeff Skase, busy vice president of Optimus, had to leave early, said, Lucas, you take the keys, take it for a drive. And what a great drive Lucas Olsen is having. He has come from the back of the pack, keep that in mind. So he has passed six UTV so far. Very solid and efficient race. And he's trying to find a way past Darren Meese on the outside. Yeah, he's not done here. Side by side again. A lot of these lines are starting to sort of come together. That's why we've seen, I think, a little more contact later in the day. Oh, blocked by Meese there, coming out of the pit. Yeah. Good driving there from Darren Meese. Yeah, and Lucas Olsen had to check up there briefly as it came into that sort of one-line section. And once again, 
Ives putting the pressure on, trying to get that lap back to get on the lead lap. Hoping, hey, you never know if there's another uh, caution. Maybe I'll give him a chance to catch up the tail end of the lead lap. I am really impressed oh. at how well Lucas Olsen is driving this race. He really is giving Darren Mies a run for his money. He's trying to find a way through now on the inside. This is the battle for second place. Time is starting to run out. Mies to the inside, Olsen to the outside. We've seen that the lap before. But once again, those lines come together. So it's making passing a little bit tougher. There's the white flag. One lap left now for Ross Robinson. Quietly worked his way, got out front, tried to stay out there cleanly. But what a great race and battle this is for second place between Darren Meese and Lucas Olsen. Olsen just hounding at the heels of Meese, constantly eating that roost. He knows it's the last lap. You've got to make it. It's now or never. Let's see if he can work it through the inside. And coming on to the step up and then step off. Darren Meese has actually been rubbing him of the line. Let's see what Meese does here. Does he cross the line? No, he doesn't. He oh. sticks to his own line and Lucas Olsen has found an open door. Oh, what's going to happen at the end of this? We know Robinson will take the win. Ives a lap down, comes across the line, but who's going to take second? Oh! How wow. close was that? It looked like Lucas Olsen had that one. We're going to have to see how the results play out. Unbelievable race at the end. But there you see it. Ross Robinson takes the win. Meese given second place over Lucas Olsen. And Jason Pluff in fourth. Of course, Andy Ives, who you saw come across the line. Well, he was unfortunately working one lap down. Great race for Ross Robinson, though. And George has caught up with him. Ross Robinson, um, unbelievable race. So much going on there, oh. but you took the win. How do you feel first off? Unreal. Um, man, it's it's kind of crazy. Never thought I'd be doing this, but I got a, a pretty good start. And then, you know, th things happened and me and Julie got into it, you know, right in the beginning. And then uh, I got her back, then kind of got in the lead and didn't think too much and got a little heavy, ended up going end over end. My door kind of rips off and uh, luckily landed back on my wheels and I wasn't broken and, you know, kept at it. And after that, I was like, okay, time to use your head and uh, race smart. So super pumped on the win. Congratulations. Well done. Incredible that you can do a flip in one of these things and still win. Well, I got to tell you, must be something in the water in Oregon. Oregon won two. And in third place, a great race today for Lucas Olsen. Georgia caught up with him. Talk about taking it down to the last lap, but not just the last lap, the last corner. You and Darren were battling, but you ended up just squeezing in there a few turns to the end. Yeah, man, I mean, I've done a lot of UTV racing over my years. This last lap was probably the most fun I've ever had. Congratulations, well done. Thank you. So Grant, I think we had some unbelievable racing and some surprises here this weekend. Uh, it was fantastic racing. The women held their own in that race. Unfortunately, just some bad luck for them. We saw tons of action, some crashes, but at the end of the day, no one got hurt. Everyone was happy, lots of smiles, and a lot of action for the fans. So more Terracross racing will be coming up for Grant Langston and for Georgia Lindsay. This is Tess Sewell. Thank you so much for joining us, and be sure to come back and watch more Terracross racing. <laughs>